Tomezi Entertainment. Oh, I didn't notice you there. Hi, I'm Dylan Tomazzi. I run Tomazzi Entertainment, and I'm here to do a UK interview with Grace Williams, the director of Easy Meats, a small feature film. In this video, we'll be interviewing Grace Williams, and also Tomazzi Entertainment will be reviewing her film. Now let's meet Grace Williams. How long have you been working on your short film, Easy Meats? I have been working on Easy Meats for a very long time. I'd probably say about six or seven years. The concept came to me originally um, because I liked the idea of someone coming home to find um, their partner cheating on them, but it's actually not what they thought it was going to be. Uh, so that basic concepts had stayed with me for a while so then when I was given the opportunity to actually make that idea into a short um, I then ran with it and developed this idea of a middle class couple living um, a very normal boring life um, and both having very different ideas of how that life should be. In terms of working in it from script to screen it took me about um, just under a year and, to act, and then the post-production process took a long time because I actually did most of the post-production myself. So um, I synced all the sound, I edited it, I did the colour grading. So yeah, that, that, that all took about, probably about five to six months, I'd say. Um, and I'm also very finickety with how I want things to look and the beat and how everything cuts to music. So that took me a lot longer. Um, just because of my own personal preference, I guess. And then I also sent the film out. I saw that sent out a short version and a long version to uh, people who had donated to the film through the crowdfunding campaign, see which version they like better and why. So that then took on another um, extra month of really honing in what that film was. So yeah, uh, it took, took a longer than expected, but I guess these things do when you don't have someone, a produ big production studio barking down at you saying, get this done by this date, we need to get this out in cinema, so, yeah. <laughs> also, Easy Meats has an awesome soundtrack. I'm the king of Shiraz. In my lamb for jam. And yes, I'm late, so I hope you don't mind just waiting for fate. On every single level, you know we relate. So what were the most challenging aspects of taking what you had written in the script and putting it to film? Like, what was the most difficult task from start to finish? Doing it without much money <laughs> and finding the location. So I originally wrote the script with having a big house in mind with Richard's office being at the end of the garden and it all being very... for the couple to be a lot grander than they are, I guess. So um, thinking about... It, I wanted very specific shots like a sunrise of a dewy garden morning etc so then I realized that I couldn't get what I wanted in that respect I really had to rework the script and luckily at the time um, I had to move flats so I was um, scanning and scanning through properties and this property came up um, and it had a vault and I was like oh this is perfect and I quite passionately and quickly put the deposit down on the flat and it was quite a quick moving in process so I still had some time on my other flat to move 
things into the new flat so that meant that I had a, a working location where um, cast and crew could really interact on set and people could stay over and, and use the set as if it was their own home really. And I mean getting anything from script to screen, even, even big budget films has its challenges. I think for indie filmmakers uh, the biggest constraints are that you can't give your cast and crew a lot in money and a lot of people will only work for a certain amount and also you've just got to work with what you have in terms of doing you end up doing a lot yourself so um luckily i had a great producer lee christian who worked as producer slash prop collector slash costume so that worked out really well but i ended up doing a lot of set of decoration and script breakdowns and scheduling and lots of other bits myself so that was quite a stressful process so then when you actually get to filming you've done all of that and then you're like ah oh, right I get to see my vision come to life now and I, I'm very much um, a director who likes to work with my actors and get the best out of their performance so that was really tough as well trying to balance everything when you've got so much on your mind. It's Kenny! Howdy there, everyone. Well, I saw the video, and I thought it was great. At first, it kind of struck me as like a YouTube version of like a sitcom. In fact, <laughs> I even got the impression that they may have been influenced a little bit by Seinfeld. In other words, there were parts in the film that were kind of funny, like the breakfast scene at the beginning. I'm not sure if Miss Williams, the lady that made this short film, meant for this and other scenes to be funny or not, but regardless, I consider them to be pretty humorous. Another thing I liked about the video is the interactions between the two main characters. You can kind of tell that there's something between those two. It's not sunshine and rainbows, though. There's definitely something wrong in their relationship. I'm not going to spoil it for you viewers, but you do find out why there is this subtle yet noticeable friction between the two main characters. Another thing that I'd like to briefly touch on is the music. Ah oh, yeah, I finally get to talk about Lee Christensen. I'm a regular watcher of D-Labs' content, so I've listened to quite a few tunes that Christensen has made. I don't know what it is, it's probably the fact that some of his music, at least to me, sounds a lot like 80s new wave tunes, and I really like that stuff. A lot of the pieces that he made for this short film not only fit real good, but it also seems like Christensen watched certain scenes multiple times. I can tell that he wanted to set certain moods for certain scenes, and by golly, he did it. So yeah, it's a nice, well-edited, and well-scripted little short film. And I hope that Miss Williams continues making more. I give Easy Meets a 7.5 out of 10. Thank you, Kenny, for your review. The film ends on quite a cliffhanger. Yep, yeah, it does end on a cliffhanger, whether that's a good or a bad one, as in, you know, who um, walks out of a situation, who knows. Um, but I think that's good. I think um, I like sometimes like a film when you make your own decisions about what happens to that character because there's quite a lot of, especially um, thriller and horror films where the ending just makes no sense or it's not the ending you wanted. So I guess in this way you can choose your ending like the old Goosebump books where you go to page 23 if you want this situation to happen or not, um, I guess. so. Yeah, I like, I like that it's a cliffhanger. Michael Minutes! I'm here to review Easy Meats by Grace Williams. She did a pretty good job, actually, I gotta say. Um, the character interactions between one another, they were conflicted at some times. Like, one was really leaning towards more of a meat meatitarian I guess you could call it and a vegetarian just really pulling themselves apart girlfriend kind of felt more down to earth like she of course as a vegetarian it seemed like uh, that really did not want to I guess inherit
carrot or really take part in meat, I guess. Just like a normal vegetarian, like almost a, a hippie in a way. It, it felt like the movie should have been a little bit longer and even like, I don't know, I want to say more of a psycho uh, type feel to it, like just go off in another direction and just, this is a psycho storyline. Kind of like a, a, a Jason or a Freddy in a way, like just going off in that direction. Like it, it just seeing the meat chopping and just, it made me want to experience a horror film. I gotta say, I gotta rate this movie a solid eight. Could have been, like I said, longer. It could have had more of a horror aspect. And I gotta say, just seeing that guy or did I male stripper just threw me for a loop like ooh. like she was more down to earth and he was more of a fancy or fancy oriented person she wanted to build up uh, her beliefs in her own way and he wanted to cut people up I, I If a major studio were to swoop in and opt to turn your short film into a feature-length movie, where do you see the story going from the cliffhanger? If the studio swooped in, I think the character of Richard could live on, could carry on, and he could carry on with his dalliances, or he could try and hide his dalliances. Uh, I think he's a really interesting character, he's very troubled man who seems to have been pushed to the edge through um, his own fault or other factors, that's up to you to decide. That character has a lot of room to grow and a lot of, um, there's a lot more to delve into that world, I guess. Um, although my producer Lee Christian um, wants him to turn into some weird uh, like 1980s character and just go on a massive slasher hunt, so um, it could go an evil way, I guess. You have a very talented cast, but in my opinion, Steve Hayes stills the show. What were you and Steve's process in bringing his character to life? Yeah, Steve is um, super talented. He's been working in the industry for years and years, um, having trained at Oxford Drama School, and he's done everything from feature films to music videos to whiskey tours. The process for him was very much, I sent him the script, he really liked it. He learnt his lines and got into the character in his own time. And then he came up uh, to the flat and we talked about the character the night before the shoot and he actually stayed over in the flat by himself um, overnight so he could get the layout of um, where all the facilities were, he could use the kitchen, he could go into the vault, he could sit at his desk, he could really uh, get to know himself as the character and interact with everything. I think that was really important so that when we came um, to shooting day, he was already Richard. So he would run through his lines with Tabitha and it just clicked and he knew how the kitchen worked so when they did their dance routine so to speak in the kitchen and their repetition everything just worked together and um, it helped that Tabitha just instantly got the character as well so it all just synced really really quickly. Steve um, brought some other elements to the character of Richard which I didn't initially think of as well which was amazing and he wasn't too scared to go quite far with the character as well and um, I always knew he'd be quite a good nasty I've seen him a lot in um, quite nice happy roles and see him presenting a lot of happy family friendly stuff but to see him really he's really good at being very bright eyed and fresh face and nice and then he suddenly can just go just like that so yeah he's he's a real talent and he's just a joy to watch on screen as well Gomezzi entertainment overall i did enjoy the film i think the sound stumbles in a couple of the rooms because it just feels like it's a little pitchy but other than that it's a great film i like the couple interaction i feel it's very realistic and they actually 
It kind of reminded me of friends that I used to have that kind of argued over, it kind of seems petty things. I also liked how the character interacted with each other, but so they didn't really interact with each other because their, their routine is very together, but also separate. I like that because it felt a very natural and how people react and disreact to each other. Also, I feel the movie ended on a wrong spot. If it just went maybe three minutes longer, and I'm not turned into a horror film, but maybe turn into an explanation film of why, maybe they both could have joined together and became kind of like a psycho couple. I don't know, there's lots of possibilities, but I feel the way it ended was too abrupt. And also, I would like to say that uh, the actor Steve Hayes, I think he stands out. He's a really good actor. I, I, I kind of like, compared him to Christopher Watts, I believe his name, from uh, Inglorious Bastards. Uh, he has a very cool presence to him. Kind of like a, a Brad Pitt, kind of like I don't care kind of attitude. I don't know, something about him I really liked. And that's why I wish the movie followed him more beyond the tendency of just kind of arguing a little bit with his girlfriend and, and went more into the Dexter area, I guess, of, of, of filming. But that's just me nitpicking. It's a great little film. It I'd say a little bit unfinished. It feels a tad unfinished, but I hopefully one day, Gris Williams, you can remedy that by making a sequel or continuing on the story. So uh, I, I give it personally, I would give it a nine. I think it's an excellent film. But anyway, thank you very much, Grace Williams, for being on my channel. I really appreciate it. And thank you for everybody who watched. Please like, subscribe, and comment. So yeah, thank you so much to you and your viewers for watching the film. It really means a lot to me and the cast and crew who worked so hard on the production. And thanks again to all my contributors um, through the crowdfunding campaign. Check out all my other shorts, web series, music videos. Um, and yeah, I'm, hopefully I'll be able to make a feature one day. That'd be nice and you can remember this moment. Um, so. Yeah, but I'd like to, um, I'm interested to hear what you, um, Dylan, and everyone else at Tomasi Entertainment thinks of the film. And thank you so much for supporting uh, indie filmmakers, um, because without people like you giving us a platform, um, we wouldn't get a voice and wouldn't get to showcase our work to as many people internationally. So thanks for that. Um, yeah, it's been great. Cheers.